Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now here I want to talk about the reason why we all should serve God. That no exception, everyone should serve God. That, and it's a privilege and it's a blessing to serve God. And some of you may think that you are weak and not, cannot do too much. Actually, you can lay hands on people, you can have the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't think that you don't have it. When you practice here and then you go out and see someone sick or not feeling well or unhappy or bothered by people, you can, you know, listen to them, talk with them and then pray for them. Now here I talk about the motivation, the reason why we should all serve God. And I have like a, a concept like a house, a house. And on top is Psalm 40, 24, 1. Psalm 24, 1. You can write this down. The, just write down the verse. That I'll, uh, the, and then you can look it up at home. It says that the, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So everything is the Lord's. God is in control. And then Revelation 2.23. Revelation 2.23. The second part. That Jesus said, I am he who searches hearts and minds. And I will repay each of you according to your deeds. So what it says here in this house. That God searches your heart. God knows your heart. And God has everything in control. You, we cannot run away from Him. And He will bless each one of you. He searches your heart. And He will reward you according to your deeds. So if you serve God and bless people, you'll be greatly rewarded. And no one can run away. But sometimes Christians think, well, I'll wait until I'm very old and then I'll serve God. Oh, I'll, I'll wait until I have no more problems, I'll serve God. You know, if you wait, actually, you will only get older and weaker and you will be able to do less things. But if you do it now, you find that you become stronger. Christians can become stronger when we serve God because when you pray for people and then they are changed, they are brought to Jesus. And then you say, wow, I can do great things for God. And then you have more faith. So first thing is, no one can run away from God. This house, you can think of the house. And the right hand side, when we have a close relationship with God, we'll always be blessed. In Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to us. You just write down the words. So when you seek God and follow Him and obey Him and all these things will be added to you. You might have problems at home, but the more you love them, the more you forgive them, the more you're kind to them, the more you can change them. And then in um, John 15, 5, John 15, 5, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So when we are in Jesus, we will bear much fruit. So on the right hand side, when we have a close relationship with him, seek the kingdom of God and is in Jesus, and then we will bear much fruit. The Christian life. And then on the bottom, to serve God, Mark 9.41, Mark 9.41. Anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah, because you belong to the Christ, will certainly not lose the reward. So that's serving God, even when you give one cup of cold water. If you serve someone, help someone, visit them, pray for them, bless them, strengthen their spiritual life, then you will not lose your reward. And then Matthew 25, verse 23, that the master say, well done, good and faithful servant. And then, you know, so the good and faithful servant, the one who has been serving God, come and share your master's happiness. Come in and share my happiness. So when we serve God, when we use our talents, and then the master will say, you're a good and faithful servant, come in to share my happiness. And then in Luke 6, 38, there it says that give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So if we give, it means give to God and give to people. And then it will be given to us with good measure and pressed down 
and shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. You have, you have so many blessings. Now so many people I say, I have, I have many problems. I have, oh, I have all kinds of problems. I cannot do it. But the less you serve God, the less you have. But the more you serve God and give to people and bless people, it will be poured over to you so much you have running over. So it's best to serve God. Let me ask you just now when you pray for each other, is it difficult? No, it's not difficult at all. When people work on a field, have you ever worked on a field, any one of you? Is it difficult? It's difficult. Under the sun, very difficult, right? Let me ask you, which one is easier, to pray for people or to work on the field? <laughs> pray for people. And then you get a lot of reward. I must say you should not work on the field. We have to do our chores. But then, when you serve God, then God will reward you greatly. So, now, we look at the house again. On top, everything is in God's hand. And He searches our heart and rewards us according to our deeds. And then when we have a close relationship with Him and obey Him, He will bless us. And then when we serve God, we will receive rewards. Isn't that good? And then on the left hand side, when people live in sin, there will be destruction. Galatians 6, 8. Galatians 6, 8. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. When they follow the flesh, they follow the anger, they follow the worry, they follow the unforgiveness, and they follow sin, they will reap destruction. Do you want destruction? No. You know, any destruction to our life is terrible. You think of it. What is one thing you can lose and be destroyed? Any good thing in your life you want to you don't want it to be destroyed? If anything happened to a body, any part of a body can you dispense of? You can just get rid of? No, you want to keep the whole body, right? You want to keep the whole body healthy. And you want your family to be destroyed? No, so if we follow sin, it will destroy us. So it's terrible if people don't obey God and stay worrying. Some people say, I have to worry because people are not nice to me. People are not nice to you, it's their problem. They are sinners, they are weak, but it doesn't mean I have to follow them. And you, we can have compassion on them. We can forgive them. You know, that's very important to understand that. The people who hurt you, they have been hurt since they were young, many times, so they hurt people. They're used to yelling, and they believe that yelling will win. Other people will help. You know, they think that they can win over other people by yelling. So these people yell and they get angry. And so these people actually live a miserable life. So you have compassion on them and say, Oh, they, they live a difficult life. I have a better life than they because I have Jesus. So I don't have to be bothered by them. What they say, the negative words they say, only stay in the air for a split second. When they say, you fool, do you suddenly become a fool? When it says useless, do you become useless? No, you still are useful. So what they say, does it have authority? No authority. But if you are affected by them, then you lose the authority of God. Then you lose joy. Do you want to lose joy? You know, for those who have experienced the joy, you keep loving God from your heart. <laughs> and then you can continue to keep this joy of the Lord. But for me, I can control it anytime. Anytime I can have joy, anytime, you know, I, I can hold it back. And it's very important. Don't live in despair, pressure, unhappiness, looking at the problems of people. We don't have to look at those problems. Look at the good things of God, right? Every day look at the good things, and then you experience His goodness. So when we live in sin, it's terrible. And then John 5, 14. There was a man who was sick for 38 years and he could not walk. And then Jesus healed him. And then Jesus said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So Jesus said to him, Stop sinning or something worse will happen to you. What could be worse that will happen to him? Is 38 years lying on the ground, is it bad already? What would be worse? 
His whole life he will be lying there. His whole life he will be in pain. And also he can be attacked by Satan. And then he also can go to hell. Those are the worst things. So, do we want to go to the worst things? No, we want to follow God. So when people live in sin, the result is terrible. So the more we think about God, the more we have joy. And when these sinners attack us, we just say, now it could be your husband, could be your children. But you say, well, it's their problem. I ask God for wisdom how to handle it. When they are quiet, when they are peaceful, we can say, well, uh, have you noticed how sometimes you are unhappy? And do you want to be happier? Do you want to have more peace? And they might say, I cannot have peace, I am unhappy, you know. And then you say, well, you know, God is very good and He can help you. And also when you follow God, you have more and more peace. Do you want the peace of God come to you so you'll be, you live a happy life? So you, now you have to find the words of wisdom. When to say what to them. And be nice to them is the most important thing, to help them. So you can change your family if you are being nice. Now in Hong Kong, we have someone who was just converted. And I helped him with the WhatsApp phone, and then someone in Hong Kong also helped her. And then she started to change. She, was, she said nice thing to her mother and said, uh, thank you mother for what you're doing. And then the mother said, why are you like this? She said, Jesus changed me. Yeah. And, and she, she's changed right away, and then there is a better relationship. So I hope that you see that when you follow God, you obey God, there is goodness. But when you don't, then there is problems. And then, the last part here, if people don't bear fruit, they won't serve God. What happened is, Matthew 25, verse 26 and verse 30. Matthew 25, verse 26 and verse 30. And then the master said, you wicked, lazy servant, you wicked, lazy servant, that the servant has not been faithful, and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. This is the servant who has buried the talents under the ground, and don't use them. Now you have the talents. When you can pray for people, those are the talents. Those are the ability God has given you. If you bury it, you don't use it. You go home every day, just worry, just feel unhappy, have no strength and don't serve God. Every day you have no strength. And then one day Jesus asks you, where are your talents? You said bury in the ground. Then Jesus will say, you are a wicked and lazy servant. And then will be cast out into the outer darkness. There will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. He said, is that heaven? And where is that? Darkness and whipping and gnashing of teeth. Where would that be? That is hell. So people who don't serve God at all could go to hell. Now serving God could be just smiling at people, saying nice things to people, helping them, helping them spiritually. Now, for instance, a dying person, you just bring the dying person to Jesus. And then he says, Oh, Jesus is good. Thank you. Thank you for praying for me. That is already His good works. But for you, you, you can do more than that, right? You can pray for people. You can bless other people. So, those people who are dying, they cannot do much. They could just say, Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's already their fruit. But for you, is that all the fruit you have? You can do more, right? You can bless more people. You know, and Jesus said, the more is given to you, the more is asked of you. Now, like for me, God has given me the spiritual gifts and the presence of God. And if I just help one person in my whole lifetime, Jesus said, I have given you so much and you only help one person? And then I'll say, well, I'm lazy. I don't want to go to different places. Then Jesus said, you're a lazy servant, right? So when we have a lot, we want to use more. You know, you are very filled with the Holy Spirit. You are one group of ladies that I've seen. You're so filled with the Holy Spirit, you can do a lot for God. Tell the person next to you. You are so filled with the Holy Spirit, you can do much for God. 
Hallelujah. And then in verse 45, you know, in verse uh, chapter Matthew ch chapter 25, there are three parables, all about the end time. The first parable is about the ten virgins. Five were ready, five were not ready. And the second parable is about the, the, the uh, parable of the talents. That the one who received five talents use it wisely and receive five more talents. And then the one who received, you know, that, that he will you'll be blessed. And then the one who buried the talents, then he is a lazy and wicked servant. And then the last parable is the parable of the sheep and the goat. The sheep has done it to the little ones. And they are, and Jesus said, you have done to me. So when you can do to one of these little ones and go outside and look for the lost sheep of Jesus, then you have done it to the little ones. And then Jesus said, you are good and faithful servant. And then these people will go into eternal life. But those who don't do it to the other people, you know, and then Jesus said, they will go into where? Eternal punishment. So when you come to church, can you encourage the people in the church? Can you encourage the people in the church? Welcome them. Good to see you. Remember the names and talk with them. Uh, is there anything I can pray for you? That's one thing you can ask. Can you say it with me? Is there anything I can pray for you? Now, if you ask them, do you have problems? Sometimes people don't want to say. But is there anything I can pray for you? It's easier. Then they can tell you good things or bad things, whatever it is, whatever they want to tell. And then you listen to them and then say, oh, I know it's, life can be difficult. I know it's hard for you. And I have gone through something similar too. And God has helped me. And I experienced the help from God. Do you want me to pray for you? Or you can visit the person and say, you know, I talk with the person to comfort the person, to, uh, to make the person feel careful. And then you have done it to the little ones. So those who have not done it to the little ones will have eternal punishment. If they don't serve God at all. Now, we don't want to say, okay, these people cannot go to heaven. We don't want to say it. Jesus just warned us. If people don't have the relationship with God and don't serve God at all, zero, zero, zero relationship with God, zero repentance, zero turning away from their sins, zero serving God, then these people can go to heaven. But some people, they do very little. We don't know. But we can help them to do more, to love God more. We don't know. We don't say to people, oh, you don't serve, you go to hell. We don't tell people that. But we, we encourage people, you can do a lot. Each person has a lot of time and a lot of talents, and you can make a big difference. And also, you, your leaders can organize you together. For instance, there is someone who needs visiting, you go together, a few of you. Or you go to different homes, you can ask God for wisdom. For instance, you can have your homes open, and then you have some refreshment. Invite your friends to come and to celebrate, or to, like you have a birthday, ask your friends to come, <laughs> to eat the birthday cake, but you use it as a chance to reach out. And you know your friend's birthday, and then you invite your friends and tell, tell your friend to bring his friends. And then more people come. And then you can share and ask the other sister from the church to share. So use your home. Use food. Use different occasions, like picnic. Go somewhere, take some friends along, and then tell them about Jesus. Basically, make friends. And then listen to them, care about them, and find ways to share and, and share what God has done in your life and be prepared. So one session of yours is to share with each other your testimonies, what you, how you have experienced the Holy Spirit, like just now, what you have experienced. And you can share with people and then you can tell people what God has done in your life. Now, let me ask you, how many of you have experienced some kind of miracles? First, I want to ask this question. How many of you experienced joy or peace or burdens go away or, or, or love just now? Can you raise your hand? Okay. So this is, you can share. And the next thing, how many of you have experienced some kind of miracles in your life? Maybe some healing, some help, some special work of God. Can you raise your hand? Wonderful. So many of you. So you can share those with people, right? 
You know, or how you have blessed some people. Like you pray for some people and they get healed and they pray for someone and then they, they have joy and then they can sleep better. You know, people with insomnia, you pray for them. A lot of them will sleep better. How many of you have this experience? You pray for someone and there are miracles. Can you raise your hand? So you can tell people, I pray for someone and then they are healed. Can I pray for you? You know, I have prayed for, I don't know, maybe hundreds of thousands of people. I pray for so many people I don't know because I go to different places. And I, a lot of times I pray for a whole crowd of people. And so if I keep counting, there are many, many. And you can do that too. So I see that you have a potential, a great potential. So you can reach out and ask God for wisdom. Where can you go? Now, let me ask you, are there places in this place here that people just walk around leisurely? Are there parks? Are there parks here that people just walk around leisurely? You can go, you know, a few of you can go there. And then sometimes you can sing. You can bring a guitar or just sing without a guitar. And then somebody walk by and then they look at you and then you can talk to them about Jesus. Or sometimes you just talk to people and then you can bring some, buy some extra water, buy some extra food and go to the park and then give to the people and say, I can, you know, I'd like to share this with you. And I want to tell you about Jesus, how wonderful he is. So those are ways you can go out. And when you do that, how would Jesus feel? He's very happy. You know, God knows your heart. Just now we look at the house, everything is in, is in God's hand. And God has everything, you know, no one can run away from His eyes. And He searches our heart and He will reward each one of us according to our deeds. And I thank God, I really thank God. You know, I'm not worthy, but He has used me. But I'm going to share with you how God confirms me because this is encouraging you to say that when you serve God, God will know you and God will confirm you. Now, when I came here, uh, there was the lady, Rosie, right, Rosie, and she, uh, she said that before, on Tuesday morning, you can ask her about it, Tuesday morning, about 1 a.m., 1 or 2 a.m., she had a dream. She was being chased after, and she was in fear, and then she ran to a house and saw some Chinese inside. And then she went inside, and then she saw me. And how did she know it's me? Because the eyes look like me. And the way that I talk look like me. And then, but the hair, there's more hair. And but when she saw me there, I was younger. 30, 40 years old, I had a lot of hair. <laughs> and she saw that I had a lot of hair. And then, and then I touched her with one finger. And then she was filled with joy and peace, and then she woke up with joy and peace. At the beginning of that dream, she was in fear. But then at the end, when she woke up, she was filled with joy and peace. And she told me that this, this is like a confirmation. She saw me, she's the sixth person who saw me before they saw me, met me in person. So that's a confirmation. That's a confirmation. And then another lady said that she also saw in a vision and saw me in a vision. The eyes look like me. And, and then, and so I have things like this happen to me. God is telling me that, that He likes what I'm doing. Do you want God to say that to you? Yeah. You know, God is very happy if you do a little thing for people. So you can start thinking about how you can bless other people and how you can help other people. How many of you are willing to bless more people, to help more people? Wonderful, there's so many of you. So we look at that house again. Everything is in God's hand. No one can run away from Him. He searches our hearts and rewards us according to what we do. And then right inside, when you have a close relationship with Him and obey Him, He'll bless you. And when you serve God, He'll reward you. And on the left side, when people don't follow God, and then when they sin, there is destruction. When people don't serve God, they also destruction and they could lose salvation. Which side do you want to be? Right side or left side? The right side. And then, we want to make use of our time, right? When you're still walking. You know, 30 years later, you might not be able to walk so freely, right? 
while you can walk freely, do it now, right? Amen. And then God will give you health and strength so you can serve God, God longer. Is that wonderful? Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's rise up together and ask God for blessings and anointing that will have more motivation. So you raise up your hand. Oh Lord Jesus, give us motivation to love you more. Give us motivation. We know that we cannot run away from you. We cannot run away from you. You search us our hearts and reward us according to our deeds. And you bless us when we follow you. So it's wonderful to be in God. Wonderful to be in God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the Lord Almighty. You search us our heart. You know our hearts. We cannot run away from you. When we love you and obey you, have a good relationship with you, you always bless us. You always bless us when we follow you. Oh Lord Jesus, we want to love you, we want to obey you, and we want to serve you. And we always have rewards. We want to serve you. And please forgive us our laziness. And also forgive us our sins. When we live in sin, sins are destructive. Sins are destructive. Sins will destroy our life. Please forgive our sins and wash us clean and help us to say no to sins. To turn away from sins. The moment we think of sins, Lord, we want to say no and reject the sins. And follow you, Lord Jesus. Help us to say no to sins and hate sins because sins are destructive. And also, we don't want to be lazy, not serving God. Lord Jesus, help us to put down the excuses. Some of us have excuses saying, well, I'm busy, I have all these things to do, oh, I'm unhappy so I cannot serve God. Lord, help us not to have these excuses. Help us to believe that we are used, you can be used by God to bless many people. Lord Jesus, change our life, change our life, bless our life, use our life mightily, and then we'll be blessed greatly when we give. It will be given to us. Oh, when we serve God, it will be given to us many times over with good measure, pressed together, shaken over, and running over. Oh, Lord Jesus, there will be so many blessings coming to us when we follow you and love you and obey you because you are loving God and nothing can separate us from your love. You always love us. Even when we are lazy, you love us. But then we won't receive your blessings. But when we receive your love, and we love you, and obey you, then we'll receive many, many blessings in our life, and our life will go higher and higher. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, please be seated. Let me ask you, how many of you are willing to group together to find ways, either at your home, or in a, with the church, with the ladies' group, whatever way, to reach out to this community, use your home or other activities. How many are willing to do? Raise your hand. Now, raise your hand higher. With the leaders, look around. Look around. With the leaders here, look around and see how many people are willing and organize them. So you can sign up on a sheet and then organize all of you to do home gatherings to reach out, to have picnics and invite your friends. You can be very effective because there are more ladies to, who don't want to work around. So ladies can reach out more to the ladies in the neighborhood and you can do much. And then when someone has brought someone, bring the person to the front and share and then everyone clap their hand and encourage them and say, good work, good work, you have done a good job. That way you will grow larger and larger, fill up this place and fill up that new building, right? Do you want to do that? Amen. And do you believe you can do it? Amen. So I pray that you, the leaders here will organize the, all of them. And then you volunteer, you say, to ask the leader, what can I do, what can I do? And then you plan different activities to make this happen.